Are you curious about discovering ways of making your life better? Then welcome to my podcast. I'm Bob Nickman, and this is The Exploding Human. Listen in while I talk with all kinds of people in the fields of personal growth, health and healing, alternative therapies, psychology, spirituality, environment, and the future. I'm looking for those answers that make life better for everyone. You'll meet cutting edge practitioners, doctors, artists, filmmakers, business people, and those who have overcome challenges. The brave, the curious, anyone who's out there helping us humans to explore, expand, and explode. Thanks for tuning in to The Exploding Human. I'm Bob Nickman. I got a great uh, little show for you today. I'm talking to, uh, he's a good friend of mine, actually. His name is Mark Osborne, and he did something uh, pretty recently, which he is calling the 100 Days of Gratitude Challenge. Something he, uh, and a little social experiment he tried, and something he tried uh, to do for himself to uh, kind of change the way he was moving through the world and how he was trying to um, change the way he related to social media and particularly uh, to Instagram. So he started this uh, 100 Days of Gratitude Challenge. He's going to tell you about it in the uh, podcast. And then we kind of digressed a little bit into uh, the ups and downsides of uh, social media. A little um, opinionated stuff here that we did, but in um, our experience with it, because I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, huge on the social media stuff, I guess, unless you want to call a podcast social media, which I guess it sort of is. But he knows a little bit more about it than I do, and he's um, he actually had a little bit of a uh, addictive quality to how much he was using social media. So we talk about that, too. It's pretty cool. Uh, check it out. This is Mark Osborne and the 100 Days of Gratitude challenge you did this hundred days of gratitude challenge it started when yeah it started in december uh december 11th was the first video that i posted on instagram of 2017 of 2017 okay so this was an instagram um uh, experiment i guess and what was it how did you how did you how did that look well uh it came to be when i found that i was not obsessing but just like really looking at my instagram constantly like multiple i would i would say like maybe 90 minutes a day or or something um like 90 minutes a day uh looking at my instagram and i concluded that that is just too much to be looking at my phone and pictures of things that aren't real life or even conducive to my life um, this is your other people's posts. Yeah, other people's posts, exactly. So you're kind of like doing it addictively, is what you're saying. A hundred percent. I I thought, and it's very common with people in this day and age to be addicted to social media. Um, and I happen to be someone as well. Um, and I, uh, you know, I love memes and I love the comedy aspect of Instagram. I think it's great, but. I just found myself looking at it too much and I didn't like the content that I was looking at. And I'm sure someone would be like, well, stop looking at it or change your content. But what I did is I took a different approach and I decided that I was going to do a gratitude challenge and uh, I was going to do it for a hundred days and I was going to look into my phone. And when I first woke up, say things that I'm grateful for into Instagram to flood the world with or the social media with things I'm grateful for instead of uh, these things that um, are not really conducive to to helping society. Like, look what I had for dinner. Look what I had for dinner. Check out my watch. Look, <laughs> look how cool my shoes are. Um, look where I'm traveling to now. Yeah, so you were taking it from hopefully the superficial to something a little bit more uh, impactful, something deeper, something. So you were trying to t- take what social media is often used for and use it for something what you felt was more uh, important. Totally. And uh, I, I found that I was looking at Instagram as soon as I woke up in the morning, and I find that to be the most destructive uh, to my day. Because mm-hmm. instead of 
like I'm looking at all these things that I don't need to and I'm flooding my brain with pictures and, you know, every, everything but myself. Um, and I just found that to I was creating a pattern of of not negative thinking, but just not as fluid days. And uh, so I decided when I was doing the challenge that I was going to do it as soon as I woke up. If I was going to look at my phone when I woke up, I was going to start the gratitude challenge. Right. So you were trying to get off of the distraction stuff and into something that had some importance to you. Just kind of to, you know, like reboot the hard drive first thing in the morning with something um, positive. Totally. Okay. And um, the first couple posts were a little odd um, because it was when I first woke up. So if you look at the gratitude challenge on my Instagram, you will see like me literally waking up with like my eyes squinting and I can't really like I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at a phone and like I don't even know the things that I'm saying I'm grateful for. Um, so I made some adjustments later on and that we'll get into. But at the beginning, it was just a little it was a little awkward, a creepy, maybe perhaps to some for sure. But uh, nonetheless, it started the challenge off pretty, pretty well, actually. And the challenge was to yourself and other people or it just started as I'm going to I'm challenging myself to say something that I'm grateful for every single day for 100 days. That's right. It was it was more it was just it was kind of like a, a slogan or a hashtag to to get behind Um you know, so that other people can do it too. Is a challenge because a hundred days of anything is is a challenge. Essentially, if you're going to do it consistently every day, um, whether it's a personal challenge or you want to show others. But um, my background is is personal development to some degree, and uh, I just found that having that slogan and that hashtag helped me uh, stay consistent on a day to day basis. Yeah, well, the word challenge is, is great because it forces you to go, I'm going to, you know, something to win in a sense, or at least, you know, be successful at. Totally. And, uh, and it, yeah, and again, it was just like, you know, challenging other people to, to post things uh, that weren't just how cool, how cool their life is. That's it. Um, the gratitude challenge, once it got rolling, was incredible because there were days where I had zits. There were days where I didn't want to do it. There were days where I was tired and there were days when I was full of energy and you can see the vulnerability in my, in my post. And so this created, uh, just a a real life setting. Um, but with anybody, you go through these feelings and emotions on a day to day basis and you still in life still continues. But if you look at the majority of Instagrams, it's only to show how cool or how good or what you're up to. Um, yeah, they're billboards for uh, look how amazing things are going for me. It's almost it, there's almost like a aspect to it of I'm doing better than you. That's right. Uh, best face forward, which may not be the case. No, and and, and I don't uh, you know I could get into it for a long time about how uh, disruptive it can be. Um, because checking out and looking at what you don't have, if you do that long enough, um, it probably could lead to some discomfort. Yeah. I always think like what's, what's outside the frame of this picture that I'm looking at. <laughs> nice. Cause I know there's stuff going on around that person. You know, it's like they, you know, is, maybe there's an oil refinery just 10 feet out of the side of the frame and whether at the beach. <laughs> well, right. And <laughs> you don't really know. No, you, you don't know. And, um, you know, you don't, a, a lot of people I feel like don't care, but they can't stop looking at it. That's, that's the insane part. Um, but I, but I, I, you know, the challenge was, was inc- incredible. Um, the beginning, the beginning of the challenge, I, I got a lot of pushback from, from my followers. Um, I don't have many followers. I, uh, they're just friends. I don't have like some padded account where I've gotten, you know, 500,000 followers and a third of them are artificial which is a thing that exists out there. Yeah, I, I know, I'm aware of that. And you're not, not you know, a, a celebrity or anything like that. You're just just a person that wanted to try this. That's right. And um, 
and the, there was a lot of pushback. It was like uh, making fun of, bullied by my by my friends. Really? Uh, yeah. It was um, because it makes people uncomfortable. When when I find when someone is vulnerable and someone is being themselves and they're doing what against the norm, like nobody really out there was doing this challenge or waking up or showing that oh my god I have zits on my face or oh my god I'm tired. And yet I'm saying positive things and things that I'm I'm grateful for, you know, that does create discomfort for for individuals who, um, you know, ha- have the, the posts with all the followers and how cool they are and what they're doing. It's an interesting thing about um, vulnerability. There's something really attractive about it when you see somebody doing it. But um, and when you get people that are that it makes them uncomfortable and they push back or they say things that are not very nice the real challenge to me is to keep going in the vulnerability because you want to go all right well screw that i'm not going to do that if people are going to be mean to me just you know i opened up and now people are being nasty um you know, my first instinct is like all right well you know i'm not going to do that uh, especially at a public semi-public level mm-hmm. that that's scary in a way you know it just uh uh, but it changed. Uh, yeah, it did because I stayed consistent and I, I didn't, I knew that I wanted to do this. Um, and I, I couldn't be happier with the, with the results. Um, people, people still had comments and I, I'm always welcome to, to a good joke or, or, or roast if you will. Um, but it started to change and everyone started to like, you know, the likes, the likes increased and, um, you know, we'll get into all like the, the things that have happened over those hundred days uh, were were spectacular. Um, mm. they, they could have been a coincidence. Uh, I do. I do like to say that maybe this is, could have be, be a coincidence of the timing of the whole hundred days. But uh, nonetheless, the way the way that I felt and you can kind of see it in the videos of how the progression of the challenge. And um, once I started incorporating other people and um just really the the feedback was incredible now let me start with one where you um give me an example of one and something that wasn't very kind that some people said i i i want to see what that is i want to hear an example if you have one if you can remember um so I would say I'm grateful for football and I'm grateful for uh, art and I'm grateful for the movies and uh you know, someone would, would have a comment about it's just like, uh, you're grateful for being a douche or I don't even know exactly what, but they would take my words and, and throw it back at me. Essentially. It's almost like the word grateful is the trigger. Yes, definitely. Cause if you had said, I really like football, mm-hmm. nothing, nobody would have said anything. It's, it's the actual word. I, th- I'm, I'm just guessing, but I think that must be it because if, uh, you know, uh, definitely and me in the in in the camera or in the instagram post essentially like looking in the camera and my face and the word the word grateful yeah that, that's that's a really good point it was definitely a trigger were the um these people you knew yeah th- yes these are people i know and uh they are it, it is consistent to to their behavior so that may it makes sense that it would come from that individual were they older friends that maybe you wouldn't hang out with today some of them totally yeah that's in, yeah so you got to see even what your old friends were like 100% and um <laughs> you know i had to out of respect for them i actually deleted the post not because i didn't like the bad feedback i i actually encouraged it because it it helped me it keep going um but it um but there were starting to be public figures eventually that saw these posts and i didn't want to have their name uh you know if it's a small town and small world if people were working together i didn't want their negative comments to affect potential business opportunities for them so I don't, wow, protect, I protecting the nasty. Well, you know, I do. They are like, and I called that individual and I was like, Hey, here's why I did it. It's not because I don't like, it's not personal. I just, public figures are starting to see this and I, I just don't want you to be looked at as a bully or anything. So, um, yeah, because that's not, that's not what the challenge was about. The challenge is about just being vulnerable and grateful and, you know, just, uh, just doing something for a hundred days, which is a long time, uh, believe it or not, to do anything. 
Uh, sure is. I mean, you can change, absolutely change your life in a hundred days. If you are somebody that doesn't exercise and you exercise for a hundred straight days, now you're on a whole new trajectory and you're, you are doing that with, with this. Mm -hmm. And and I'll never forget the first time I, I experienced gratitude, uh, not to go too deep into it, but I was in a tough spot at the time and I didn't, my living situation was a little, uh, not ideal to say the least. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, somebody, I was looking for a place and somebody showed me a room with a a furnished room with a TV and a bed and lights and a safe environment. And I, I'll never forget the first time that I really felt gratitude. I was like, wow, I'm so grateful for all these things that I, that I didn't have at that time. And, um, you know, so that always stuck with me. Uh, just, just really being grateful for those little things that, uh, that you can lose sight of on your day to day life. So, yeah. So you didn't have a place to live and you, and you got a place to live. That's a big jump. Right. But not only a place to live because I've, I've been in, you know, I've stayed in rooms on say an air mattress or like, you know, a not so furnished room. Um, but to have like a comforter and a bed and a TV and a dresser, um, those things are, they can help your mental state tremendously. Yeah, sure. You, you know, you're, it, it becomes a home rather than just a place to crash. That's right. So what are some of the things that happened uh, along the way that you, you were saying that you had a big change well the first the first thing is i found that i was saying the same things over and over for the first uh maybe 20 days or so plus or minus uh you know a few different things but i would say art and my family and i would say football and um and it, it made me realize that these are things that i really am grateful for and so maybe I should look a little deeper into these things that I keep saying um, and and try and, f- you know, include these into my life, if not a career or, or things that um, maybe I should just continue to focus on these things a little more that I truly am grateful for uh, outside of outside of, you know, my bed and my my apartment and, and technology and, and things like that. So that, that was, that was really nice, uh, to, to reflect on after the challenge. But, uh, some of the things that, that happened were, I mean, um, there were the good and bad things, right? Because over a hundred days that that can happen. Um, there weren't as many bad things. Uh, so the, the first example was I, um, some business opportunities started coming my way just randomly. Uh, I met, I met a girl in a coffee shop and a modern day love story unfolded. Um, could have been a coincidence. I don't know. Um, but I was, I was obsessing over my phone and it was early on in the challenge and I didn't, I didn't want to do that anymore. So I put it down and the technique that I use is to, when I'm obsessing over my phone is to look at the person next to me and ask how they're doing. Oh, and so I did this and this girl was like, oh, I'm doing great. This is my first day in Santa Monica. And uh, I, I said, after some small talk, have you ever been to Malibu? And she said, I haven't. I'm from Australia. Uh, this is my first hour here. And I said, do you want to go? And she said, yes. And then we ultimately spent the next few days together, which was, um, and there's so much more to it. So that was, that was really, that was really cool. Um, that was a, that, that's a great story for another time. And, um, and then there was just like catching moments of vulnerability. Like, uh, I, like I, I got super lucky in Las Vegas and I didn't make it about how lucky I got, which like Instagram is supposed to, right. It was, it was, Oh, check out all this money. I won. Look at how cool I am. Me in Las Vegas. I actually dug deep on the feelings and was like, I'm so grateful for feeling these feelings of, of lucky, of excitement, of joy, of, um, you know, just, just like, just like gleaming. Right. And, and when you, when I looked at those moments of gratitude, instead of just the material things, um, you, you, I gained, I gained a lot from it. Um, 
really being grateful for, for excitement and joy and, uh, because those moments flee. Um, but, uh, but I loved catching moments of vulnerability through the, through the gratitude challenge. So that was, that was, those were great moments. Um, what else is there? There's, a. Uh, you know, I, I did a bunch of tra like some random traveling, like just, like stuff just came up that was randomly, um, and uh, and I always did the the challenge every day throughout where it was. Um, I had a crazy SpaceX had a flyover California, and I just happened to look up and like it was like literally in my face, like wow over the ocean, and I got a video on that, um, and that got like seven seventy five hundred views or something crazy. Um, but it really changed the gratitude challenge. The best moments were when I started incorporating other people, when I would say, Hey, do you have a second to my coworkers to, um, to just people that I know and was like, Hey, do you mind doing the gratitude challenge with me? And that's when it was awesome because, uh, I got to see their discomfort. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, sure. I did, they, they honestly, the, the feedback was at first was like, Oh, I don't know. And they're like, what are you doing? Um, wait, we do, we're doing this into your phone. And I'm like, yeah. And I would say my, the things I'm grateful for. And then I'd be like, today I'm grateful for. And then I would, I would show somebody else and they would say the things that they're grateful for. And, uh, and that was great. But I was always so grateful for their reaction after they did it. They always felt excited and proud and and grateful and they they realized like i don't know what their day was until i asked them to do that but i know after they always felt re-energized re from it so that that was cool so it would be you and then you would just sort of move the phone so they could so you'd be on there together or just that's one after the other one well one after the other i would just say and today i'm grateful for it and then i would move the phone over to like you know so it was a selfie mode for the individual oh Wow. And, um, now, were you getting um, were, were you getting in conversations with people after you would, that you would post that and they would say something? Would you respond and it would create a conversation? Well, the um, not on video, but after, yes, and and the human. No, I mean after. Yeah, yeah, a after of course, and the human connection was is, is the number one thing about the challenge that I found. Uh, to be the most rewarding because even just talking with them, as I mentioned, seeing how much they, they smiled and, and loved it, but like just, just saying thank you. And then having this conversation, sharing this moment and, um, everyone always, always loved that. Um, which is, which is really cool. And, um, and for me, even, even this right here, like, uh, have be, uh, this opportunity to speak about it, uh, I got old friends calling me from from back east saying, "Hey, keep keep up the challenge. I love it." Uh, there would be, you know, questions: What are you going to do next after the hundred days when it was coming to an end? Uh, what have you learned from it? And just, um, you know, that those are the human connection is is unbelievable, um, and it's all from being grateful because I think a lot of people can relate to to. Uh, you know, moments of, of not being grateful. And then when, when you're grateful, um, just for that moment, you, you just, it, something changes. Yeah. I mean, I know growing up, I never even heard the concept just didn't come up. None of it. Mm -hmm. I, I never heard it. I, I just, you know, um, no, me neither. Honestly, it, it, it sort of became a newer concept as an adult. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I, as you know, I learned more about it. It's a, spiritual principle in most religions hmm. so it's um it's an interesting thing how that just kind of went by the wayside for for or just I, I don't know if it went by the wayside or if it was ever even there at least i had never heard about that even that as a concept uh, no. until i was older no me neither and being being a male in my in my uh in my 30s talking about that too is is kind of a foreign concept you don't you know, uh, my age demographic, we don't, we, we, I just never, that was not something that we did. It, you may be looked at in a different demographic or something like that. And that's just not, uh, yeah, it's so, that's so crazy how like a, a, a man in his thirties is, can't say things like, Oh, I'm grateful without getting 
ripped on. Oh, absolutely. A bunch of guys sitting around. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you want a beer? Yeah, I'm really grateful for how, <laughs> how you just handed me that beer. Right. It's what's like, what's wrong with you, man? That's right. You definitely, something's not, <laughs> you're, you're looked at as weird, which is crazy because do you just have to be that, that stone, you know, that stone face all the time? Like I'm not allowed to be, be grateful for, for coffee or, um, you know, a writing utensil or my smartphone, you know, um, as much as I talk about Instagram, I'm so great. I, I say it all the time. I'm so grateful for my smartphone. I'm so grateful for Instagram. It provided me with a platform to do this stuff. Technology is great. Yeah. Weren't you going to do something else with this? You were talking about doing something. Well, but, I was going to this, this was, help uh, to encourage that or. Yeah. You know, I was going to uh, I was going to to take a cigarette and stand by a dumpster and do the hundred days of attitude. After, <laughs> but uh, as a joke, as a, as a joke. Um, but, I, you know, so when it when it came to an end, the feelings that I had were sadness. And I was sad for three to four days. And um, I've never felt sadness around, you know, uh, other than a loss of a loved one or, or a really close friend or uh, breaking up with a girlfriend. You know, those are sadness that I felt. Um, but I've never felt sad when uh, something ended that I don't I don't even know what to say. I just never felt sadness around a project that ended. And, um, you know, college, I guess, of course, you, you know, you're happy and sad, but true, I was sad for four days. And uh, th that was so great because it showed it just showed how much that it impacted my life. And um, everyone was was like, can you um, what are you going to do? Can you keep it going? And um, I wanted to I, I wanted to keep it going because it, it became part of of my my social media image, actually, like everyone loves seeing it every day. And um, and uh, but I but I concluded ultimately that I was going to stop because everything does have a middle, a beginning and an end. And I said that in my last share because. I don't need to force my will on on this um, this project, and then all of a sudden it's the 200 days of gratitude, the 300 days of gratitude, and um, and again I wanted to do that, but um, but we'll we'll see. I mean I I do think about it often, and people ask me, and I might I might have a project in the pipeline for this, um, but. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll see. I, I think I think sooner that I think sooner than later I'll have a decision about it. Okay. Um because people people want to see it actually. I don't know what else to say without coming off, you know, egotistical, but well, if you got a great response to it and it made you feel good, what are you grateful for today? Oh, today? Um, oh, I'm grateful for so much. I, uh, yeah, well, let's lay it out there. Why not? Oh wow! Um, Don't I'm, ask me that though. Uh, we'll see. No, you can't. I would like to. They. Um, so I'm grateful for my morning routine, and uh, I'm definitely grateful that football is back in a couple in a couple weeks, and I'm grateful for uh, for art and and how I because of the challenge I'm I'm pursuing more artistic uh, ventures, if you will. Um, I'm grateful for coffee and water. I think I say water in every gratitude post um, because, that, yeah, that's a separate thing. Water is great. I'm grateful for human connection. Uh, that is so big. Um, it was something I struggled with for a while, so I'm super grateful um, for human connection. That That is, that is key. Um, I'm grateful that I'm grateful. Uh, I'm grateful... Yeah, I'm grateful to be here with you and that we have this technology to even do this. And then it can go into a internet world and be, you know, consumed by someone that may be curious about gratitude. Um, I'm, I'm grateful. Yeah, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm just great. I'm, I'm just grateful. You know, I'm grateful for my clothes and I'm grateful for the, the day I had yesterday, which was so full. And I got to swim and rock climb and just like you know again but uh, but it's not it doesn't show how cool i am i'm just grateful for these things right that that's that's what's that's where i think society is 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 getting a little skewed it's like say, i'm saying these things to make myself sound good um 
but if you truly are grateful, it's okay to be grateful for these things. Um, oh, so, something that came up last night, I was talking to somebody about uh, gratitude, and they say they, they do a gratitude list among three friends, which I highly suggest. But there's something to be said about saying it out loud that is just, that, was, that is so impactful. Um, so, because again, as I mentioned earlier on in the recording, that I found these things that I was grateful for every day instead of just writing it and then pushing it to the side, like an email or a text. Um, you don't really go back and reread your text, your gratitude text. But if you hear yourself say these things over and over and over, um, it's just a different avenue to look at maybe, maybe some things that you, you didn't know you love. And um, with something you love, I, I always encourage, you know, you, you add a little more, you do a little more towards that in your life. So what, what are you grateful for? Um, well, I, you know, as I was sitting here listening to what you were grateful for, um, I love that you were, uh, and I'll get to myself in a second, I love that you say water. <laughs> Every Cause, time. Because we're made out of water, so, you know, it, it's, a big, it's a big thing. Mm-hmm. There's, you know, there's a lot of people in the world that clean water isn't part of their daily, you know, given. So that is something to be grateful for. You know, you get to, you get to see... These things that you know, a lot, most of us can take for granted all day long. That are actual would be actual that people who don't have it would be super grateful for. It's kind of hard to be grateful for something that just exists in your daily life mm-hmm. when you're deprived and you get it. It's easier, but to realize that maybe somebody else doesn't have it, right? And be grateful that you do. Totally. I was actually grateful for. Um, on the way over here, the um, I was in the parking garage, a different parking garage than this building that we're in, mm-hmm. and one of the exit uh, things was closed off, and the line was really long, <laughs> and I found myself getting agitated. And common. I, That's common. Yeah. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Right? And there was a guy trying to back out, but he was being blocked by some cars and I could have easily just pulled up to the car in front of me and prevented this person from backing out. It would have been very easy to do. There were people behind me (laughs) and, and I want, if I was that guy, I would want to be let out. Now I'm not saying this. Yeah. I'm saying it a little bit to show what a great guy I am, but (laughs) (laughs) I waved for him to come back and I let him come out. So I was grateful that I wasn't, you know, that I that I was in a hurry. Mm-hmm. I wanted to get here on time. Mm-hmm. I was being delayed. It was a twenty minute delay. It, it went. It was so slow. The line was up like a whole floor and a half. Nice. Because this one thing was closed, and then I was like, "Why doesn't the city have somebody standing here right. helping?" Right. I went to a whole thing. Totally. Of it, of just kind of, you know. And those are those are the best moments though to be grateful that I found through the challenge because it's. It's like, what a gift. Like you, all you're doing is you're in a car in, a, in literally paradise in America and you, you're being delayed 20 minutes. I mean like that, what a, that's a, that's a gift. There are people that, that don't, that, <laughs> I'm in hell. Right, right. I have to wait. <laughs> right. Look around. If we go to Skid Row or certain parts of Venice, like, believe me, they're not waiting. They're not waiting for anything um, other than to, you know, whatever whatever their issue is so that that the, those i love the, those those moments um not not to cut you off but there was one where i ran into an ex and and uh it was one of the, i i almost passed out honestly i ran in i was at we we had a uh, a random encounter at a grocery store and the conversation you know did its course and i left and i go to pay for my items and I found myself almost blacking out. Like I went into tunnel vision. And uh, as soon as I left that, I didn't pass out, but I heard nothing of what the cashier was saying to me. And I felt myself about to do this. So I asked the cashier, how was your day? And I heard nothing of her response, zero. And I walked to my car and right away I got into the gratitude challenge. And that video sticks with me because I, I'm, I'm, I'm mumbling I don't even know what the hell I'm saying, but uh, I know that I was so grateful for that discomfort. Like, I can't stress that enough. Like, being grateful for discomfort, being grateful for 
for being aware, like, hey, capture this moment that that uh, that people go through. Every, everyone goes through discomfort and, um, you know, uncomfortable and awkward and weird. Like those are pure human moments. Like be grateful for those moments uh, or that's my perspective, like because it's not all go. It's not all good. It's just not. Um but but I don't. Sorry, I I went on a thing there. But no, I, I like that. That was kind of my favorite part so far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was yeah. it was great. Picturing you passing out at a cashier's right. station. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I get that. But man, the, the emotions was... came up, and you kind of mm-hmm. were swirling around, going, mm-hmm. "What the hell was that?" You got blindsided by a that's encounter. Right. Yeah. But but that's that's human. Na- that's normal, and uh, and that's okay to. It's so, like I started saying like, oh, I'm grateful for comics and, and, and comedy and, and uh, I didn't even I didn't even know what I was saying. But, uh, but just yeah. that you you took that discomfort moment and, and forced yourself into the gratitude lane mm-hmm. and didn't matter what came out. You were just, you know, refocusing on something that was uh, was positive. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing how I hadn't done the challenge up to that point. Right, like the timing of all of it, like oh, that point in the day, you mean. that point in the day. Because had I had I already done the challenge, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have done that. Um, so it was amazing how it was later in the afternoon and just the timing of it all. And um, and I wouldn't have I wouldn't have thought to go to gratitude had I not been like sixty days into the challenge, you know. And that's an that's an amazing moment. Like I I, I tr- that I tr- not because I ran into this individual, but because. But because of the fact that I, I got to f- to to recognize the gratitude and discomfort. Now, is your Instagram? Are you still putting stuff on Instagram? You know, at the moment, I have cut my social media down to ten minutes a day, mm-hmm. and I have actually um, switched over to Twitter a little bit to not not it has nothing to do with you know po- po- uh, political th- things. I just I want to start reading more. Um, I don't want to be stimulated with pictures and you know, it's very challenging. Uh, my brain has been taking me in many different directions since I've cut down, um, on social media as a whole. Um, it has me doing we- not weird things, but just different than what I'm, what I'm used to. And, uh, that's, uh, you know, that's for a different time, but I, I find myself reading and writing more simply, um, which, which, uh, which is great which is really positive because looking at pictures and just being hit with picture after picture or short video after short video. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm still in, it's only been, I think a couple of weeks since I cut down on, on Instagram and I've been off Facebook for a few, like four or five months now. So, uh, isn't it funny that we talk about getting off of, you know, addictive social media. It is though, and it, it because it's a social norm now. And if you're not on it, you're you're kind of. Uh, it's it's very weird the time we're at now. I'm I'm noticing younger generations aren't at, on it as much. They realize it's just not, um, or kids that I've talked to, they they know it's there and they're on it, but they're not on it as much, um, versus older people who are on it much more. And then there's my my age demographic who is, uh, who is definitely on it as well. Yeah, I I have mixed feelings about it. I don't I don't love it, but I do like that I've connected with people that I've lost touch with. I do kind of like that. And it's a uh, and I'll confess too that it's kind of a good spying tool. Of course, <laughs> wonder what this person's up to that I don't want to talk to. You know, something that I find <laughs> it's is kind of weird. It's isn't so it? weird. But and here's the weirdest part is that I, if if we follow each other and you're say you're on the road. And when you get back from the road, I don't even know what to ask you because I've already saw everything that you've done, right? So where's the conversation? So there's no human connection. It's like, oh, I know you were in Toledo. I know you were in Cleveland. I know you were in Sacramento, right? I know you were in Houston. So what do we even talk about? How was it? Yeah, it was great. Like I already know where you, what you did, where you went. And that to me is the weirdest part. And that's why I've kind of took a step back from it because I want to be able to, and again, this is just a social experiment that I'm doing on my own, is I want to see what people are, uh, like I want to, hey Mark, what have you been up to? Um, instead of just knowing everything that I'm doing. So this, you know, of course I will plug or promote, but at the same time, um, 
you know, it would be nice to just say, hey, how was your day yesterday? And if they want to know more about my day, I can expl- tell them I did this instead of me just being like, oh, check it out. It's the Exploding Human podcast, like blah, blah, blah. Right. So, yeah, um, mm-hmm. it's very interesting. I had that happen about an hour ago. A guy uh, saw a, um, a picture of me and two other people. We were at a comedy show last night. And one of the guys put it up on his Facebook page and whatever he wrote. I don't know. And this guy that I didn't even know knew that I was there, who I didn't hadn't seen or mentioned it. How was last night? I'm like, and my first reaction was, how do you know about that? And why do I need to answer that? If I wanted you to know about that or me to right. discuss it with you, I would have brought it up. I didn't, and then I was like, you know, oh yeah, it was fun. Of course. But um, I, my first reaction was, get out of my business. <laughs> totally. <laughs> but, which you know, is a fair, which is, a is fair it? I don't know. I, I felt like I was being kind of, you know, I wasn't rude to the guy, but I was like, wow, I well, felt invaded. Let's put it that way. Uh, which, and, and that's a, doesn't that seem like a fair response to the, I, like, like, I don't know. I think I'm just a surly guy sometimes. Well, I don't know. And maybe, <laughs> maybe I am too, but I don't know. It's like, I, I don't know. Well, he meant well, he was being friendly. Totally. It was kind of like he was starting a conversation but if he had said, you know, how, you know, how are you? What's been going on? I, w- I wouldn't even have brought it up. I would have, I actually forgot about it. Mm. So, yeah. So, well, okay. So there's, that's the other side of the coin then too, because, um, you know, that, that person might want to go to the show, right. And, and they're asking you yeah. how the show was, and then maybe they're going to buy tickets later on. And that, and that, that's a benefit to, to, to that essentially. Um, so interesting. That's, yeah, that's an interesting thought there. Um, and if, but as a whole, I don't know. The, it's, it's, we'll, we'll see. It's going to be interesting to see where it goes because I, I feel like people, uh, I feel, I, I don't know. The whole thing started. There's not, a, there, to me, there's not a lot of really positive reinforcement that's out there as a whole. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't grow up with this stuff. So it's, mm. uh, you know, my kids do, but I, you know, I didn't grow up with it. I didn't grow up knowing what people were doing. Uh, that I don't really talk to that much. It's it's sort of an odd. It is. Do, you, do your that, kids have it? Yeah, of course, right? Oh yeah, yeah. And are they? Do they spend time on it daily? Yes, they do. Yeah, they they spend a lot of time on it. I, I don't know what exactly what it is, but it's it's more than I do. And you and you're okay with it because it's a social norm, right? I, there's nothing I can do there. That's right. You know, if I would say, you know, I mean, they're they're pretty well grown so it's, yeah it's not like no and it's a norm it, i yeah. do it like i'm on it right and so and, and i'm not you know the standard but if we look around the the people that are around us now it's safe to say they're going to be on it today yeah well. and they're you know they're they're not like not leaving their room and they're on it for nine hours i mean they're functioning it's so i guess totally. it's, it's just it's just an you know i wonder how it rewires the brain something that uh that really kind of um I use the word disgust in me uh, was something I saw recently was a um, when I was in Malibu on the beach, there was a photo shoot that of of I, I'm going to stereotype and say it could be Instagram models. Right. These 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 women were having a photo shoot, um, which which is fine. That that didn't disgust me. But what, what the issue was is when I saw uh, what a appeared to be a girl who was say eight or nine years old taking photos of the two girls that she was with them on and she was taking it with her phone which i assume will be used as potential photos for later um that was that was tough for me to look at honestly um because they were um doing something that wasn't appropriate for an eight or nine year old. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I, th- I just think that the setting the standard for this, for this child, again, this is a separate, this is not, yeah, that's but okay. it's not about gratitude, but we're <laughs> off on a tangent, which I, uh, I like the tangent. Well, I mean, it just, it was tough to look at, at to see a, a, a child taking photos with, with, with obviously not her cell phone. Um, it was the adult's cell phone. Yeah, like they weren't really mindful of what, how that might affect that kid. And yeah. It's uh, into setting the bar almost, it seemed yeah, this like. this is what's important in life. It, it disturbed me. It did. And I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, the people I was around, they, they kind of thought the same thing. And I, 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 I've never experienced that before, seeing children take photos of adults, regardless of what they were wearing. It, what, they weren't nude. 
I mean, they were in bikinis that were skimpy, but we live in a, in a, in a place where that, that's, that's normal. So, um, but it was just still the idea of the child taking the photo is where, is where it was a little tough for me. Yeah. Um, to, to see. So you weren't grateful for that. Well, again, <laughs> I, but, but that's a feeling that I never felt. So, I mean, I can say, I, I mean, there, you, you look at, you look at gratitude and stuff, you know, at, 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 at disturbing moments now do you do you want to say what your instagram is so people listening to this can look at this gratitude challenge or do you want to keep that for yourself no totally i i i um i will not be posting as much on instagram i will not it's not something um that it's something that i I will be taking uh you know significant time off of Mm -hmm. um but it's ozzy markborn it's o-z-z-z-y-m-a-r-c-b-o-r-n Ozzy Mark. Born. How many Z's? Three. Yeah, three Z's. Uh, somebody that I think I know uh, got the, got the two Z's one, and uh, okay, and they just took it from me. Ozzy Mark with a C, born. Born. It's a play on where it's like Ozzy Osbourne, just yeah. Ozzy Mark. Born. No, I kind of thought that <laughs> might. <laughs> I thought it was clever. Ozzy Mark born. Mm-hmm. And that's on the Instagram. That's right. I call it the Instagram. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> Which like, is, a, like an old guy would say, oh, you're on the Instagram, are you? Right. <laughs> the, the, yeah. So it's, uh, it's fun. Um, and I, I highly encourage anybody to, uh, to not just write down your gratitude list, but to say them out loud and, uh, you know, you'll, you'll be surprised. It could be a coincidence, but, but overall, I know, I know those hundred days I'll never forget. I know hun- those hundred days, uh, people still ask me about and, um, yeah, it's something really simple that you can do to to change to change your day. Now, are you still saying them out loud without? No, recording? I haven't. I haven't um, till today. That's right. Yeah, and it's been it's been a it's been a couple months since I I've done it. Um, again, that sadness that sadness stuck with me. It did when it ended. That was that was a new feeling for me. I was sad. Um, I won't forget that how sad I actually was. Well, maybe you'll come back to it. I don't know. Well, I th- it sounds like there, there, it might have to. Um, I don't see a downside, but that's just my opinion. I I agree. It's just uh, I don't I don't know if they're ready for it. They might be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Who's they? The society. Oh, <laughs> the Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> the Instagram might might want it. Uh, did and did you ever do strangers? Um, People you just didn't know at all. Well, that's what a stranger is. Why would I have to define that? Well, word? I, I uh, does a does a bar- like a coffee uh, barista, someone behind the counter, count as a stranger? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Then yes, then yes, I have just one. Uh, well, and and the the girl that I that I met. Um, she, uh, I, 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 of course asked them to do that. And then, uh, um, yeah, so a couple, a couple people and, um, and I would always, I would always try and find someone who, who may be, you know, a little, a little, not just, just, uh, I don't know the word, not, not as grateful maybe or so, something like that, just to try and not make them uncomfortable, but get out of their comfort zone a little bit. Like you would sense maybe they're having Total. Off day. Yeah, exactly. Um, That's why I kind of like the idea of going up to complete strangers just to see what, what like, what's the, did you get anything like really odd from somebody with they, that you felt was, and I say odd because that would be just, you know, your opinion of odd in the moment of what they said they were grateful for. Well, you just get a lot of frozen. Like you'd get a lot of uh, e uh, today. Uh, um, uh, it was like when I ran into that individual and I was caught off guard, and, and yeah, and you just mumble and you, you freeze, right? Um, but that those are that's that's normal human situations. People get jammed up sometimes, and that's okay. And uh, I lo- I like that because that's a reason to be grateful. It shows they're human. You know, this might be interesting and we'll never get to see the result. But if you're listening to this podcast, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to ask in a second, I am grateful for, and then I want you to say it out loud, uh, wherever you're listening to this. Okay. Ready? I am grateful for, okay. How did that feel? <laughs> <laughs> what was that like? 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, again, it's saying it out loud is is really uh, it's that's big time, big 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 time. Because it's weird, right? You're walking around like crazy. I'm oh, I'm great. I'm grateful for I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful for that. Yeah. You're like, what? How am I? But I can just write it down, right? And I can just see it. Well, that ha- that has its own thing, you mm-hmm. know. Um, I have this meditation tape, and the and um, one of the things that the guy has you say stuff out loud sometimes, which is really strange when you're meditating. Totally. You know, and and um, he says, you know, say this out loud. You know, I'm grateful for you know my health but you're in this meditative state and you're saying something out loud and you're by yourself. So you're saying it to the universe. Totally. That's the only way I can sort of look at it. And that, and, and I think that has proven results, right? Yeah. Totally. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, it goes against my instincts or my training. Maybe my, maybe as humans, our instincts are to have those feelings and they've been kind of pushed down or, Mm -hmm you know, we're taught that it's not cool. It's not, uh, particularly for men, it's not masculine. No, no. And, and I did find that the, the female demographic did respond a little more positive than, than the the males, but, uh, one-on-one, one-on-one, uh, the male demographic definitely asked me questions about it. They didn't do it as much in, in, in public. Um, but they were curious about it for sure. And then, and, they they would send me text messages or, or phone calls saying how <clears throat> saying how they enjoyed it and to keep going. Yeah, I think people want to have feel you know they want to feel safe. Mm. If they don't feel safe, they're not going to do it. Um, but if you make it something that's like okay, uh, I mean, I, to me, that's sort of a, the, one of the coolest things about you doing that. You you made it okay for people who might not thought it was okay. Mm, interesting. I didn't, I didn't I didn't really really think about it. And you hear like high profile celebrities and and people that write personal development books always talk about it, but you don't see them doing it that much, which is interesting. Yeah. Right? Yeah, like you they're don't. like, "Oh, make it make your gratitude list." Well, uh I'm not going to say I I came up with something cuz I didn't. It's just what I thought naturally was the right thing to do after I was fed up with what I what I was doing, right? We take action. I take if I don't like it, I need to change it. And so Instead of getting off Insta- Instagram, I just put a put a positive twenty second video out there every day. A fine use of social media. That's right. Yeah, once in a while, <laughs> <laughs> somebody comes along <laughs> and figures out a way to make this shallowness deep. Totally. <laughs> but yeah, and I, I uh, and you know this is inspiring here sitting down because maybe maybe it will get me back into uh, into getting out there and and. Uh, and seeing if I can, um, you know, find some people that are grateful or ask them what they're grateful for. I, I like the stranger idea. Me too. I, I think there's something sort of um, challenging in that alone, just uh, more so than doing it yourself. Mm. Interesting. That, uh, I, here's what I, here's the majority of people are probably going to enjoy it honestly because again every person that I brought in that I said they 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 loved it every time and it took 15 seconds of their life so. yeah and maybe they walked away and they went oh you know something happened to me and I think I I, I mean I think they did they felt something which is cool do we have more to talk about I don't think so. Yeah, I'm grateful for this uh, room that we're in. It's a study room at the Santa Monica Public Library that, you know, as a resident, I can I can uh, rent it out for uh, $0 That's for right. 2 hours. They provide these wonderful study rooms and who's to say you can't come in and do a podcast? That's I've right. done 3 or 4 of them here. It's a great location. It's uh, uh I love the, I, I'm so grateful for the library. I've spent yeah. so much time here. It's right. uh, it's unbelievable. Like in in Los Angeles, the, I've been to I spend time at North Hollywood Libraries, Brentwood Libraries, this library. Yeah, it's just it's it's just a it's just a place where I, I'm always happy when I see a lot of people in here. Yeah, me too. Uh, Cuz I you think like with all the access to information that's online mm-hmm. and you can buy books people still come to the library. That's right. It's um, it's a free resource. I mean, the internet is free essentially, but you still have to pay for for the internet itself. 
You do. So yeah. here it's, it's, you know, um, it, ha- it has everything. And if they, if they don't have it, they will, th- in some time, they will get it to you, which is even cooler. And not just books, movies. That's right. Periodicals. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good library word. <laughs> that, is, that is. I don't even know what that means anymore. Do they still use that? I don't know. <laughs> magazines. <It's all laughs> just means magazines. Yeah, it does it though? I guess it, or like is it smart magazines. That's what I know it to be as. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it scared me between the ages of like 11 and 17. <laughs> yes. We, we need to check out some periodicals. Because yeah. they, they're like, you know, cataloged more seriously. Right. Exactly. Yeah. They have volumes, and year, dates. So, totally. A bunch yeah. of letters behind the people's yeah. names. <laughs> <laughs> The whole periodical room here, I'm sure, somewhere right. in the basement. <laughs> right, exactly. It's a, it was in the basement. I never, I didn't want to be there. Um, all right, cool. Yeah, this is fun, Bob. Thank you so much for having yeah, me. Yeah, I'm very great. I'm very grateful for this. It's uh, it's nice. It's nice to talk about it, and it's nice. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. thank you, Mark Osborne, ladies and gentlemen. The hundred days of gratitude challenge. Try it yourself. Try it yourself. Uh, highly recommend it. Thanks, Bob. Okay, bye. Well, big thanks to Mark Osborne and the 100 Days of Gratitude Challenge. Check out his Instagram, Ozzy Markborn with three Zs. See what he's up to. And thank you for listening in to The Exploding Human. I got some stuff coming up, like um, I have a guy coming up, uh, David Wiss, who is a nutritionist, and we talk a little bit about uh, gut health and nutrition. Oh, yeah, and I have a guy coming up um, that I'm going to be uh, interviewing very, very soon about some innovative, cutting-edge treatments for cancer, something I know zero about, so I'm super uh, excited about talking to him. His name is Attila Haju. I think I'm pronouncing it correctly, but I don't have to ask him when I interview him. So those are a couple of the things that are coming up, so uh, keep listening. I appreciate it very much to have anybody that wants to find out a little bit more about these... Uh, body, mind, spirit topics in The Exploding Human. Thank you.